Japan, shaking off the lethargy of centuries, has taken her rank among the civilized modern powers. Theodore Roosevelt. Steel and soldiers, centralization and conquest. As Japan, the solitary islands in the Pacific underwent a renovation of their military, economy, political structure, and role in international affairs, a formation of respect and esteem towards Eastern cultures emerged. The expansive development of industrialization from Western to non-Western countries enabled Japan to become an international contender of imperialism by rapidly westernizing and defeating the largest contiguous empire on Earth, the European Russia, and placing the Japanese islands in the Far East at the mutually respected table of modern world empires. During the 19th century, European industrialization expanded in the cities of England. Great Britain and other colonial empires had the advantage of pre-established financial institutions of banking that facilitated loans. It also had high rates of urbanization caused by such matters as the Enclosure Acts. Prevalent industries included agriculture, textiles, and steel production. With such thriving economies, it became possible for European powers to afford commercial ventures overseas. This increasing need for resources and trading areas started what would eventually be known as the Age of Imperialism. Meanwhile, the Japanese nation was experiencing a fundamental change in its characteristic identity. Once an isolationist nation, a feudalism under the Tokugawa shogunate, Japan emerged as an imperialist power driven by policy alterations of the young Emperor Meiji. Formally, Japan had formed a non-compliant strategy toward international trade and Western influence. Contained by their borders, the emperor lost his supremacy to the feudalistic chain of power known as the Tokugawa Shogunate. With multiple lords, or a daimyo, each controlling a large parcel of land, it was common for many minor civil wars to occur between the military of each feudal lord. Additionally, agriculture and other forms of domestic trade served as the sole source of economics outside of the limited Chinese trade and very few Dutch ships a year to the port Nagasaki. However, in 1854, with the unannounced arrival of Commodore Matthew Perry in the U.S. Navy, the shogunate was forced to absolve the procedures of trade restriction in the Treaty of Kanagawa. The lands of Asia had become the stomping ground of Western powers. By the time Japan was forcibly opened to the outside world, China, Indochina, India, and Manchuria had already been carved into territorial spheres of influence by Germany, France, Britain, and Russia. China had become a largely dismembered country leashed to several different empires through strategic advantages to military action and a dependency of such socio-economic acts of domination as the foreign regulation of the opium trade. With a mutilated political landscape and a people looked down upon by many Westerners, China would become one of the key motivational points for the rapid reform of the Japanese government. In 1868, the chain of Japanese emperors reclaimed the power from the Tokugawa Shogun, the Great General of Japan through the actions of political and militant elites to restore the emperor to power in the Boshin War. The Tokugawa regime lost its foothold upon the nation. This restoration of imperial power, while bringing about a return to the former political system, brought deep-seated changes to the country's political scene. The young emperor, Mutsuhito, seized military power from the shogun and claimed as his own the name of Meiji, or enlightened ruler, with his motto, enrich the nation, strengthen the military. High-ranking officials of the new government were commissioned to travel to and report on the modern bureaucracies, technology, and ideas of Western European nations. The Charter Oath of 1868, one of the first documents created by the Meiji oligarchy, stated the goals for a new society. By this oath, we set up as our aim the establishment of the national wheel on a broad basis and the framing of a constitution and laws. 1. Deliberative assemblies shall be widely established and all matters decided by public discussion. Two. All classes, high and low, shall unite in vigorously carrying out the administration of affairs of state. 3. The common people, no less than the civil and military officials, shall each be allowed to pursue his own calling, so that there may be no discontent. 4. Evil customs of the past shall be broken off, and everything based upon the just laws of nature. 5. Knowledge shall be sought throughout the world, so as to strengthen the foundations of imperial rule. The administration continued a path of rapid and far-reaching conversion towards industrialism and faux-Western culturing. The population, freed from the binds of feudal serfdom, was then able to obtain public education. The new system of schooling, modeled upon the United States, yielded a generation of well-educated citizens versed in the tactics of domestic and international capitalism, as well as advances in agriculture. Additionally, without class restrictions, 
the people of Meiji Japan gained the ability to climb the ladder of social and economic mobility. Travel and methods of communication were upgraded to extensive railway systems and telegraph lines. The military underwent a complete reconstruction and modernization with the aid of Prussian military advisors, with mandatory mail enlistment and immediate adoption of the most innovative weapons available, including such weapons as the Gatling gun, howitzer cannon, and the implementation of a navy of modern warships. This quickly made the highly esteemed samurai of old Japan become obsolete and given no more credence than any common foot soldier, leading to the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877, a counter-westernization movement quickly put down by the aggressive progressivism of the new army. With the new foundation of government, the emperor set forth a reformed constitution in 1889. This constitution would create the foundation of a centralized imperial rule, giving absolute power to the emperor while still allowing the flexibility for an elected parliament or diet to express the voice of the population. However, with the expanding goals for a sustainable nation of industry and progress, it was not long before the limited resources of the Japanese islands would create a need for an outside source of supplies. This call for new land came into action by August of 1894 with the Japanese conquest of Korea and the Sino-Japanese War. Opposed by the Qing Dynasty, the new Japanese Navy and Army fought for control over the Korean Peninsula to gather a front for resource collection and to create a buffer from any continental enemies. Seen as the dagger pointed at the heart of Japan, the acquisition of Korea was a primary goal of national security. In 1895, the Treaty of Shimonoseki gave sovereignty to a new Korean nation, a Japanese protectorate, liberating the peninsula from its old Chinese connections. China, in addition to a monetary penalty, also ceded to the Meiji Emperor the Formosa Islands in the South Pacific. With the small country's victory over the much larger China, Japan had formed an eminence in the collective mind of other non-Western nations. The administration continued with this aggressive momentum on February 8, 1904, when Japan would mount a surprise attack on the world's largest contiguous empire, Russia. From the end of the Sino-Japanese War, Japan had an objective to gain control of areas further inland of their original conquests. The imperial motives of further expansion led to the Battle of Port Arthur on February 8, 1904, a preemptive strike under the cover of night by the Japanese Navy against the Russian fleet stationed at Port Arthur. Manchuria, being Russia's industrial sphere of influence in China, became a location of desire for Japan to expand their newly born industrial empire. With resources, railways, and developed warm water ports, both Russia and Japan saw this region as being indispensable. Japan, using the new fleet of armored warships and modern weapons, won a decisive victory in many battles until the final, critical triumph of the Imperial Navy of Japan in the Battle of Tsushima. On May 28, 1905, Russia's Baltic fleet was virtually destroyed, losing 27 ships and more than 10,000 men to casualty or capture. The Russians, in a suit for peace and the Imperial Government of Japan, were brought together by Theodore Roosevelt on September 5, 1905 to sign the Treaty of Portsmouth. In this treaty, the bulk of Manchuria was returned to the Chinese nation, while the Liaodong Peninsula, containing Port Arthur, as well as a joint control of the Russian island, Sakhalin, was given to the Japanese Empire. The Russian people of St. Petersburg, disillusioned by the failure of their armed forces and other domestic issues, rebelled against Tsar Nicholas II in what would be known as the 1905 Revolution. Japan had created its role on the world stage. During the battles of the Russo-Japanese War, military attaches and observers from various Western nations took notice of the small nation's tremendous victories. Japan, an Asian nation which only recently emerged from centuries of isolation, had conclusively defeated a European giant. Sparked by the unexpected victory of a small island chain, others such as the Young Turks of Persia in 1906, Sun Yat-sen of China in 1911, and Mohandas Gandhi of India in 1919 staged a range of rebellions, revolutions, and reforms inspired by the Meiji Restoration. In 1868, the start of the Meiji period of world history, the islands of Japan were sustained by only 26 steamships and a total of 18 miles of railway. By the end of the Reformation, Japan had increased its national count of steam-powered water vessels to 1,514 and extended its railways to 7,100 miles. Aided by military and social reforms, Japan rapidly and effectively created a modern imperial nation equal to, or, in the case of the Russo-Japanese War, greater than other Western empires. From a revolutionary action to restore the imperial rule, an administration focused on the domestic and international reformation of industry created a worldwide reaction to the vast potential of non-Western peoples. By the end of the Meiji period in 1912, Japan, the once isolated feudal country in the Pacific, had become an empire capable of action and influence on the grand scale of world politics.